and we're live. Charlie would be freaking out right now. If he knew we were, live. <laughs> we're not live, though. We're just recording. We're live as we, um, as we speak. <laughs> Royal Rumble 1992. A look back in time. JML here. Fire Frank here. I always look. Yeah, I don't know. I'm always this way, that way. Yeah. Um, what a time to be alive in 1992. Yes, we were. <laughs> Some of you guys out there weren't, but we were. No, we, we were. 92, um, man. That was just a fresh, freshly turned nine-year-old fire, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I was six. What a time. What a time. Well, I think I was five turning six. Oh, so. that's not too good. So we were just like in our elementary schools wondering what was going to happen this this event. Title was on the line. A lot of excitement. I I don't even I don't think I had the frame of mind to even know that this was even happening. <laughs> I think this was the first uh, pay per view event I remember being hyped for was the ninety three SummerSlam. I think that was mm. the first one that I really like. Oh. Mom and dad, I'm like, I need to watch this. Right, right. It's on pay per view. I think when you first, think, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. When you're when you're younger, you're like you don't even understand. Like you're like, and if you hear about it, you might think, "What's pay per view?" You thought it was. You you probably turn on the channel like, "Where's the where's where's the Rumble?" Yeah, <laughs> ninety three SummerSlam. I was in the the Lex Express uh, hype yes. at the time. Oh, certainly. I mean, I was older than you, but I still was caught up in that. I won't lie. Exciting time. As well, but what a different company! Just a year and change earlier. Oh yeah, so '92 Rumble, Albany, New York, the Knickerbocker Arena. I always remember that arena name because, like, Gorilla Monsoon like puts an emphasis on the Knickerbocker yeah arena, and and so always remember it. Um, first of all, commentary team just Goes. magical to th- this night, this very night. This team yeah. was just. The highest, I the mean, highest it's not a classic game. wrestling, like, oh, they're going to know every hold and move. So, like, for the Excalibur fans out there, <laughs> like, you're not going to like this commentary style. But as far as right. the camaraderie, the joking, like, this is, to me, this is the apex of any commentary team. Yeah, I mean, even Excalibur himself would probably, would probably tell you this is this is where it's at. Corey Graves was talking about it in his uh, podcast yesterday, just talking about growing up and Bobby Heenan would make his father crack up. So he realized, oh, this guy's funny. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this this whole show, the story they, they tell in the booth. Oh, my God. Alone. Like, you don't even know what's happening. Just listening to them, you understand the entire story of everything that's going on. This is like when we did the Bash at the Beach, 96, and we were saying Gorilla really sold the whole story. This commentary team sold the story of this pay per view the entire night. Heaton's uh, alliance with Flair and Gorilla, like poking fun of them during the event, like, oh man, you're freaking out here. You don't know what number he drew. Like the entire night. Yeah, I was going to say that, that, and it pays off incredibly so because the entire show, what numbers? I don't know. I don't know. And as long as you weren't watching the Coliseum video version of this, you wouldn't know either. For some reason, oh, they yeah. decided, they decided to Did, add in. I mean, it was after the fact, but what if you hadn't seen the show? It kinda... And I drew number three. It's on the network version, which is odd. <laughs> yes. The reason they use the Coliseum Master for this this event, on some shows they do. Well, but th- we'll, we'll, we'll discuss why they did that. Yeah. Uh, there was one big reason why they used the Coliseum video. Um. This was like the first rumble that really had stakes as well. Because prior to you just like yeah. you won the rumble, that was it. This you actually would win the WWE title, which was held right. up, uh, vacated due to the shenanigans between Hogan and Undertaker, uh, between yeah. Survivor Series ninety one and uh Tuesday in Texas. Tuesday in Texas. Yeah, where yeah, Hogan regains the belt, but then Tony decides, oh, he cheated, even though like he clearly knew that Flair had cheated in the private. Didn't, it didn't make any sense. It didn't have to. It was just let's let's put the title on the line in this match, make it even bigger, and it was. This was the uh, 
first time they've done this. The second time was in 2016, right? When uh, Triple H won the title. Yeah, when he made Roman defend it in the Rumble, which was an interesting concept. Yeah, they haven't tried that since, but yeah, I mean Brock did enter it when he was champ. One well. versus all. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, and it turned out pretty fun. Uh, so let, let's get into the. There was a dark match. Chris Walker defeated Brooklyn Brawler. Who the f is Chris Walker? <laughs> Actually, I I, kind of, I actually know who that is because uh, right after this show, we uh, my dad took me to one of the, the garden shows and he was on it. He was just like this guy. He wasn't really featured on TV. I think maybe on primetime or something or occasionally. He was just some guy. They it seemed like they were like he was a new guy they were going to push, but he never really did anything. So that's why he's probably opening up this in the dark match. Uh, so the opening match that we see as a uh, consumer, whether it was on VHS or the pay-per-view event live was the new foundation. So the, the new heart foundation, Neidhart and Owen Hart. Now let me ask you, Frank, why would they take everything that was cool about the heart foundation and make them uncool with the ring gear? Well, the thing was, it's just like they, for whatever reason, when, when they, this Neidhart was doing commentary on, on, on wrestling challenger week, then they decided to put him back in the ring and he, he starts wearing this new, Whatever he was wearing, uh, and then when they just they a month later, like oh, we're going to team up with Owen. Let's let's not find him new gear. Let's just find gear for Owen that looks like his, and he's going to wear it now, and he's going to keep it for the next two years for some reason with multiple partners. Uh like it worked for Nightheart. It didn't work for Owen because Nightheart's strange enough for it to be to be fine, but for Owen, I don't think it worked. So it's a new foundation, Orient Express. This match went. 17 and a half minutes. How does this match get 17 and a half minutes? It's funny. I you we mentioned this off air, and I didn't even realize it was that long because the uh the, the uh, later uh, match we'll talk about the Bushwhackers and Beverly Brothers seemed like it went longer than 18 minutes and it didn't. But yeah, I don't know. They they always like to have longer openers at this time, it seemed sometimes. Like at the Rumble, this is like two years in a row. The year before they had the Rockers and Orient Express that went about 20 minutes. Um Great match, by the way. Uh, if anybody yeah. wants to go back and watch that one. Um, I think in 90, they had like the six man tag. They went a while. They like, usually the Rumbles would open up with a longer match back then, it seemed like. But uh, I don't know. For, first of all, like I said, we, they just they threw together this new foundation team. Um, they wanted <laughs> to give them a big pay per view win. They had really nobody for them to face, face. So they brought back the Orient Express, who had essentially already broken up because I think Tanaka was not even in the company at this time. Kato was doing like, TV job work for for a while. Then they brought him back for this match. He disappears again. And then later that year, uh, after Conan uh, quit really quickly, he, he became the new Max Moon, uh, Kato. But, uh, yeah, this was a strange, strange match on paper. And funny that it went 18 minutes. I mean, it was about getting these guys over, and it, it was fine. It wasn't that bad of a match, I don't think. Maybe too long, as we said. But. I think it was too long. Just too long. Um, impressive win, but this would lead to nowhere because again, Nightheart would be fired within weeks after this show, I believe. He was gone yep. by Mania, so and Owen was floundering around with that same gear on until he found Coco Beware and said, Hey, you should wear some gear like me. Be a tag <laughs> You don't you don't need you don't need Frankie no more. You don't need parrot. Just just put on that was like the best pants. part of Coco was the bird. <laughs> they took it away for some Spenders and parachute pants. We're going to take away the bird and we're going to give him the bird. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and insert somebody complaining about Coco being in the Hall of Fame right right about this time. Yeah. But I won't. I will not complain about that. He sang Pile Driver, guys. He sang Pile Driver. That should be enough. He's not the worst person in the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah. Next match. Roddy Piper defeating the Mountie for the Intercontinental Championship by submission. Five minutes and 22 seconds. A short match here. The Mountie got a Intercontinental Championship victory at a house show a few days earlier. 
where Bret Hart had a, a record 119 degree <laughs> fever. Um, Figure, hey guys, get, take a guess who decided to come up with that angle, by the way. Take a guess. First one doesn't count. Yeah, there was um there was some yeah. stuff going on around this time. Right before this, Red was supposedly uh was trying to jump to WCW. There was a rumor about that. Um and yep. he, he found that he couldn't because he didn't give notice in time, so he had to stay. So I don't know if this was punishment or this was just a plan all along to to, to set up the next the mania program, but he quickly loses the title. I think the match was only a couple seconds long. They only showed the clip here. Um but it was put. The story was he wasn't. He was had a hundred and fifty five degree fever, and he, he was dying. But he went to the ring anyway because he had to press. He had to do it for his fans. Mountie beats him, uh, beats him up after the match. Piper makes a save to set this up. Um, as far as thrown together matches, the goes, Mountie. Yeah, the Mountie got a the t- Mountie, one of the ring. worst right. Intercontinental champions of all time. Yeah. He only had it for two days, right? <laughs> Can't really complain. <laughs> hey, good for him. He got a he got icy Tyler Rain. He was later tag champion. So good for him, I guess. Um, it was the perfect person to like transition the title over to Piper here to set up that mania program. So, I mean, it this was this, this segment Piper yeah. never never. This is never the only time Piper would ever wear gold in WWE. They, they brought that up here. That's that's why this is one of my all time favorite moments and a lot of people's. Um, not much of a match, but this whole this whole thing here was just like. The pop that was Piper the pop. Got. Oh, it was like the highest. God. This might have been the other than you know his his time main eventing the early WrestleMania. This might be in his biggest moment of his uh, career here in New York, as it were. Um, that pop. You're right. The, first of all, the pop when he beats him with the bell rings, and then they dramatically have Finkel announce him as the new champion. Yeah, the crowd goes nuts a second time. And yeah, it's, it gives me goosebumps. I'll be honest. Intercontinental champion. Think it. Between, right. yeah, two goats in one segment there. Finkel, Piper's reaction. But the like, a kid on, like, a, like a kid on Christmas. Yeah, the commentary. Even Heenan's like, he's never had a title before. Now he's cha- He has a chance to have two titles today. They yeah. really over here. You can tell they both yeah. like him very much because even Heenan here, even though, you know, being the heel, he, he puts it over. It's like basically saying, hey, good for him. Love this match. Uh, I will. I will fight hey, anyone who complains Piper about this. Piper was in tremendous shape. Oh yeah, this was like peak Piper shape. Which is funny considering he would go away right after me. <laughs> but he was. He looked. You're right. He he looked tremendous shape here. He was lean, mean fighting yeah. machine. Like he he was. He was always a little pudgy, right? Right. But like this time period here. He later was, on, yeah, he, he kind of he was cut. Was cut. Well, not even later on. Prior to, he was always yeah. a little pudgy. Yeah, he was always a little pudgy. But then I'm saying it right after this, he st- he for the most part he would stay in pretty good shape, even when he went up, showed up to WCW, obviously. So yeah, great moment. Uh, what else can you say? This was fun. It was fun. Um, it's all that matters. Speaking of shenanigans, some people probably thought this was fun. The Beverly Brothers. I gotta see. <laughs> That's what I thought. Mm. Think of the Jameson. The Bushwhackers and Jameson. Let me ask you. <laughs> who the F is Jameson? Yeah, a lot of people are probably asking that if they didn't they didn't watch um supposedly a lot of, uh, WWF programming. Supposedly Vince McMahon was at Westchester uh County Theater. The little dining theater. Yeah. theater. And he saw Jameson and was like, that guy is funny. I'm gonna put him on TV. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he basically he showed up on when Bobby Heenan used to have the Bobby Heenan show on primetime, he showed up like as his sidekick, this nerdy guy. I'm assuming he must have done this nerdy character in whatever play yes. Vince was seeing. Yep. So yeah, so he was basically on and off programming through the through a couple of years, usually on primetime, and then which kind of set up this whole thing. Uh, right in the were, kisser. I'm gonna hit him right in the kisser. These two teams were feuding, so the Bushwhackers didn't have a manager. So, like, I, I know we got to get Jameson. It was a hodgepodge. You have the, the genius, <laughs> Lady Poffo. You have Jameson. Yeah. You have the Bushwhackers. Come on, this is like this was like Vince's wet dream right it was here. A cartoon. I, I will. Yeah, the, the Bushwhackers. 
it's so they were it's so weird that this is what people are gonna remember them as considering what they started their career as that everybody talks about them being this yeah like, tough hardcore heel tag team bloody matches and they, they come were here. uh they were what was their name it sheep wasn't herders the, the sheep herders why do i get moon dogs and sheep herders confused? <laughs> but they were yeah they were like really well known and like all around before they um uh, they made the jump here but hey they made probably made more money here than they ever made anywhere else so i don't think they complained they, they took far less bumps here yeah i can't blame them they were older here they were already in their like well into the 40s so they were over they were just, like i said we were i was a kid then everybody loved the bushwhackers they didn't have to win it, a match it was their the walk oh the, the noogies looking fans heads <laughs> It was if you if you watch any show from the, like the early nineties or late eighties when they come out, watch how how the crowd reacts. The entire crowd gets up. The adults too. So, whatever you say about the in ring, uh, they were they were fun characters. This match, however, not very fun. In fifteen minutes. Yeah, way too long of a match. But I'll tell you, Beverly Brothers, man, yeah. what a freak! They were a gem of a tag team. Yeah, they were the kind of team that you, that you need in the division. Like these guys can. They would fight. They would feud whatever whatever new team would come in. I mean, them and the Steiners had some good matches. Um, yeah, genius. Only thing I'd say about here is they didn't have their their more awesome second theme that I remember them for at this point. So <laughs> I was kind of disappointed. I forgot. Like, ah, they didn't have it yet. But <laughs> the genius with them was kind of kind of worked. I don't know. It was better than the, when they first got introduced with with Coach, the short lived oh, Mister Perfect manager. He was with them for a couple of weeks, and they got the genius, which was a better fit. The genius, of course, always making money in a company consecutive years. I mean, Jimmy Hart couldn't manage everyone. That was the yeah. Issue. He needs somebody, and all he had was these guys, so that's fine. I actually thought Slick would have made a good manager for the Beverly's. Yeah, they. It's too bad he had kind of they had phased them out at this point, and then there wasn't many managers. You had Harvey Whippleman, but when once he came, he went with Sid. He kind of wasn't managing anybody else for a while. He kind of like inherited all of uh, Slick's guys at this point because later on you'll see Warlord come out. He's got Harvey Whippleman, which I completely forgot was a thing. But yeah, yeah, the, the, they were a good team. Um, that's that's much what we can say about this match. Uh, it's it's pretty much a, it's just the, the classic comedy match. And I, they, there was some bushwhacker matches in the company that weren't weren't so bad actual matches. This was more of a you know shenanigans, as you would say. It was like Vince was like, I need yeah, to all, laugh. All the, all the greatest hits of Vince's humor in this match. Bite him. Bite him on the butt. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> oh, look. He's, he's, he's wiping his nose. Boogers. <laughs> um, speaking of. So uh, Beverly Brothers win. Uh, uh, Jameson winds up the punch genius and just yep. kicks him in the leg, which he sells ridiculously. So that's what happened, guys. Just for the speaking record. Speaking of the. Uh... A disaster, the natural disasters, defeat LOD by countout. Tag team match for the tag titles. Clocking at nine minutes, 24 seconds. We discussed off air. LOD Road Warriors, they had a weird run with WWF. Like, obviously, they got the pop, but their matches were just not great. They weren't booked well. Or there was always some sort of like, dusty finish or weird scenario that would happen in the ring that you just couldn't even uh, come up with the logic behind it. But then, you know, you find out many years later the struggles that Hawk was going through and it, now it kind of makes sense as to why they couldn't perform to the same level they were during their Crockett heyday. Um, Frank, what do you think? Yeah, and you know when you look back, I mean, it's just. I mean, obviously they were very successful. They didn't. They didn't ever lose a match. I don't think that's what the whole. This was like a way to protecting them, but they didn't really. They have this tag title run. This match happens because this is like the big house show feud at the time with them the disaster. So you think, oh, they're just continuing it maybe to Mania, but then, like a couple weeks later, at a, at a, out of the blue, off air. They lose the titles to Money Inc., who just forms the team like right after the show, and then yeah. they disappear until Mania when they re reappear with Ellering. But and that really doesn't go anywhere. 
again because of hawk struggles and then also animal gets injured right after SummerSlam. i think we talked about this on the SummerSlam review um so yeah it's just very odd remember like like you said pop was there i'm just big into him at the time they sold um, so many shoulder pads sold shoulder pads t-shirts makeup whatever you can think of I had, wrestling I had buddies wrestling buddies action figures I mean, yeah, I can see why it's one that was the, the big dream. He could sell all the stuff. They weren't. It's not like these guys I mean, he, have a good he match. Created, he created demolition because he didn't have yeah the Road Warriors. So and obviously, demolition had a much better run in the company than they would ever have. Yeah. In either, and he, their, it's honestly he even tried to double down. He had powers of pain, which he tried to make. Which were, uh, uh, yeah, which were a Crockett like answer to the, have them have them feud and they left come there that didn't work out he turned them heel until he finally got his hands on the real ones but by that point yeah i'm gonna say mainly because of hawk's issues obviously here they weren't reliable so he couldn't he couldn't have them hold the belts for that long because they just if you ask the, the common wrestling fan the average wrestling fan who's the greatest tag team of all time and they they only really watched the 90s maybe early 2000s Mm-hmm. And it's always LOD, and I, and I think I was one of those people that would say LOD until I really started to get dissect matches and storylines. Probably in the 2010s, mm. and I'm like, yeah, they were the most popular. They were cool, but certainly not the best. Top ten. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I can okay. see why people would pick them though. Because it mainly, it's mainly because of their longevity, I think, and they were everywhere. They were every company, won every title, so I can see that. That's why. So they're going to be high up for me always too. Put just without putting on my, you know, like you said, looking into the match quality and then all this, you know, yeah. smart mark stuff. But I mean, I, I still am a big fan, always will be. But it's but like funny looking back, are they the, like the Dudleys are a far superior superior team? As a tag team, yeah, you'd have to, even though their run wasn't as long, yeah, even though it was pretty long. Actually, I shouldn't say it wasn't as long because it was pretty long. But the Hardys, right? Yeah, you, you know, can even say the Hart Foundation. Hart Foundation, the, Steiner, the Bulldogs, I mean, Steiners are up there Steiners. for me as far as in ring. Uh, Demolitions even in there for me. But... TNA, right? TNA tag teams, a plenty. Oh yeah, America's Most Wanted. Yeah, beer money, beer money. Yeah, they had a lot of good tag teams in TNA. We'll say that. Machine guns. Machine guns. Yeah, we can do that. We'll do. They'll have to do an episode one day, just all tag teams. We'll we'll, we'll talk to Charlie. We'll we'll make sure to tell him it's not live. <laughs> yeah, it's not we'll live. talk about tag teams. <laughs> and we'll start bringing up all these WCW tag teams. He's gonna have no idea who we're talking about. It's gonna be fun. So stay tuned, guys. I mean, even the Brain Busters. You know that that short run. Sure. Well, Arn and Tully generally, yeah, they, they would, what a team. Midnight Express. We can go on and on. This is not the tag team show. It's just the Royal Rumble. <laughs> but I, I, moral, this, this story, was moral, moral of the story. Yeah. I, I personally would not say LOD is the greatest tag team of all time. Were they most popular? Yes. I, I would say without a doubt. Or the impact on the business, maybe. Yeah. I would still um, say. But anyway, nothing, not much to this match. It was a decent. No. Big man power brawl for a few minutes, but it ended. It was a mess. They brawl the, the outside. Part of this match was the the post match yeah. uh, interview segment with yes. Jimmy Hart and Gorilla, where J- Jimmy Hart's like, "We've been robbed. We've been robbed, baby. We've been robbed." <laughs> yes, we should win the titles, but you know you can't win it on a count out. I like how they grabbed it. Like that was my favorite part of this period when the heels would win a title match by count out. They grab the titles and act like they were the champs, like they yeah. didn't know the rules. I, I don't know. This was it. Was not much of this match. It was a weird ending. I feel like why did he roll back in the ring? Why would he take the count out win? He looks. He looks like an idiot. Um, but, yeah. So they. You would think this would lead to this feud continuing. Instead, we got the natural disasters babyface turn like weeks later. For money because, because because of because of Hawk struggles and having to go away, they had to pretty much change positions. I don't know if I would have done that. Honestly, I think I would have turned a nasty boy's face earlier than they did in, in yeah. retrospect. Because the natural disasters are better. They shouldn't be baby faces. I mean, I know oh. Earthquake clearly had a great time being a baby face. If you saw it when during this time, he was really excited to be loved. But, jeez. 
Uh, Earthquake the, was like 30 years old and he looked 55 years yeah, old. Yeah, did we mention this on a, the show. Um, another, we could do a whole show on how old people looked versus me, how old ask, they were. Let me ask you something, right? Before we really get into the, the Rumble match itself. Yes, this is where the fun starts. What I loved about this and it is the interviews of the participants before yeah the rumble match well, the, yeah those quick cut like rapid fire interviews yeah they should do that every year yes i mean occasionally they will i'm like no do it all the time especially during the show out of all of them what was your favorite interview Ooh. there's a lot of good ones yeah. I mean, Jake's was great, as always. I'll, get, I'll tell you mine after. I just there. want to see if you if you say the same one. <laughs> I'm trying to think, because I've seen the show so many times. I did just rewatch it again. Uh, Macho Man. Yeah, Macho Man's good. I'll go with Sid. I just love Sid's promos. Mine was Paul Bearer and The Undertaker. Oh, that was a good one, too. Bodies, 29 bodies. <laughs> I was thinking of Taker, too. Was another one. <laughs> that and was Taker, and Taker just comes in. It was like the first time you really like heard him talk talk. And I was like, oh, we got something here. And this, was, before, this was like right before he turns face. Right. He, and where he would speak a little bit more afterwards. Because before I was just like short sentences. That's why he had Paul Bearer, but then, yeah, 29. He was just enjoying, enjoying the moment here. 29 We could have age game. Undertaker still in his 20s here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Brown's uh, career. Man, what a... You want to talk about a star-studded lineup for a rumble. Right? I'm just going to name the people, right, in order here. Yeah. Bulldog. Hall of Famer, DiBiase, Flair, Sags, Haku, Michaels. Oh, and by the way, this was coming fresh off the barbershop window. Yeah, his first, his first televised match since then. Yeah. yeah. Tito Santana, Barbarian, Kerry Von Erich, Texas Tornado, right? Repo Man, who, Demolition, Barry Darso. Star power there, yeah. What, what a terrible gimmick. Jeez. <laughs> Like Craig the Hammer Valentine, Nikolai Volkov, Boss Man, Hercules, Piper, Roberts, Duggan, Shyster, Snuka, Taker, Savage, Berserker, Virgil, Cur- Colonel Mustafa, who was? Who was Iron Colonel Sheik, Mustafa? Yeah. Iron yeah. Sheik, former champion. Rick Martel, Hogan, Skinner, Sergeant Slaughter, Sid Justice. The warlord. Wow. Yeah, even the uh, the guys who weren't you didn't have didn't have any chance of winning. Even these you know the token guys were had some net value of people or just at least people that people remember to this day. So yeah, there wasn't one you can call like who you want to call a scrub in this, but everybody, you know, is memorable, one way or another. And just the the the, the world champions, the future world champions in this, the yeah, it was just a different aura. I don't think they ever topped that. No matter how no. many rumbles we've seen, like this feeling of star power in this, with with the all time commentary team on top of it. Ah, oh. <laughs> we start so off. We with, start off with Bulldog and DiBiase. Right. I uh, will say Tony coming out to hold the title. They booed him out of the building, which is always funny. Yeah, Bulldog and DiBiase start off. And then when number three hits and Flair walk, and then the just the kind of the kind of oh, Heenan just loses it. <laughs> No. That's not fair to Flair. It's not not fair, fair to Flair. Perfect. We didn't plan for this. We only <laughs> planned for maybe 20 minutes. And he's like, <laughs> and then in Gorilla just is so happy. Are you changing your pick? <laughs> and he just keeps telling him, nobody has ever made it to the end that drew the first number, five number. And he just keeps hammering it. Shut up. Calm down. You... He's like, sit down. Would you calm down? You're going to have a heart attack. Calm down. <laughs> and everyone like, and I, my favorite part is everyone who comes to the ring immediately goes after Flair the entire yeah. time. You want to talk <laughs> about performance? Him. This is yeah, this, this is, wasn't like he hid in the corner. No, like 
there was parts where he came out and just started hitting people, and, and Heaton's like, "What are you, what are you doing, doing, Rick? What's <laughs> happening? Yeah, you don't want to hit him. Rick in this match. He wasn't sleeping on the floor. He was... like when Piper comes out and he engages. Oh, that's a great segment where he clears the ring and he's like, "Yes, he's won." Go ahead, goes. He has not won. And then the buzzer hits, and what, what, how perfectly booked was this? That yeah. Piper comes out, the crowd loses it. <laughs> like, oh God. <laughs> I, you, Pat Patterson's booking, you know, you could, his fingerprints all over this. Jeez. It's, well, he, he knew, like, the inner workings, the storylines, the... All the stories perfectly told. Like, he's in flair. Like, and, every, and everyone well, interacts what about, with him. What about him and Von Eric? Yeah. They st- he starts having face-offs with his former foes. Even if, like, they didn't really bring it up. If you're a longtime fan at that point, you're marking out for all these things. Showdown where, where Von Eric, he's showing... Valentine puts him in the figure four. Yeah, when, when Sean comes out, like fresh off his heel turn, they, he immediately goes from it. Like and it's essentially him and Sean decide to have like a contest who can take the craziest bumps from all the yeah. things. They're, they're just taking crazy moves. Even Sean, that's his first like well, fresh off his heel turn. Did they of, say you know, like a a line oh, of like the future is here or something yeah. like that? Which Sean oh, he knew from the yeah he knew already from the top. You know, was always a and he was right. You know. He said Sean Michaels has entered the building. Like, yeah, or when they even announce he left the building. Only I remember I used to go when I went to house shows. Shawn Michaels has left the building. Shut up, <laughs> who cares? Yeah, I'm thinking all the all the different spots here. You said Piper comes out. That that's a fun fun the segment. Boss man and Flair. Boss man and Flair have a crazy showdown. Yes, <laughs> he, he, Flair, he fights everybody. Flair takes a absolute beating. I'm pretty sure everyone he like everyone that came in the ring at least took a shot at Flair. Like he took a bump from like pretty much everybody in the match. <laughs> he takes a beating. Honestly, I'm watching this live on pay per view myself uh, with my father as a kid, and I would, and not you know not being a Flair fan, you know at the time you know, I'm a kid, I'm, I'm at nine years old. Like oh, who's this guy coming in? Like I was aware of him, but for him to come into the company, like he thinks he's a big shot, and he comes out there and just impresses to the point where even me as a kid, like well, well this guy's pretty tough. I was like, I no, that's I'm like, man, this is the. I was like, this is the best wrestler of all time, right? And he's here. taking these, and we, I remember this lat like thinking he was so hilarious the way he, he's like constantly taking that face first bump a million times yeah. in this match. He's like, he never stops going, and he was. This wasn't like the the younger Flair. This is Flair already in his forties, and he still got like the cardio of a. You've also had the storyline with Savage and Jake the oh, Snake. Yeah. When Jake comes in and like every time the, the net buzzer goes off, he's looking over his shoulder. I like the part. Yeah, he comes in. Piper's got and, he, and then they take turns. My favorite part of the commentary here is when uh, what is it? Jake, Piper, and Flair in the ring, and then Piper saves Flair. Like he hits Jake from beating up Flair. And he goes, "Thank you, Roddy. Thank you. It's a kilt. It's not a skirt." And then the minute he turns on him, "Why well, you no good freak? You skirt wearing creep?" Whatever he says. Yeah. Something. <laughs> calm down and, 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 and Gorilla's like calm down I already told you he's not going to make it why are you still rooting for him this isn't fair to Flair it continues it continues yeah Macho Man comes out kills Jake odd spot he jumps over the top and they have to cover for it you have Taker with Savage, and he throws them back in, and they're like, "Oh, I guess, I guess the rules are you ha- you have to be thrown out." Which you, obviously years later, with even the next year on, that's not true. But they, I think he clearly, I don't think he meant to jump over the top. He was just so you know, Savage was so into him being himself that he got a little carried away there, <laughs> trying to try to beat him up. On the when floor. Hogan comes out, oh my god! Now the crowd goes nuts. He goes after Taker and Flair. Heaton goes, just let Flair win. I'll be a different person. I promise I'll, I'll promise be good. I'll never do anything bad I'll if promise. you just let him win. <laughs> He's like literally crying at this point. <laughs> yeah, Star Power really picks up here. You got Hogan in the ring. You got Savage, Piper, Flair. Then you get, you know, you have Slaughter. Then, yeah, Slaughter's in there. All these former champs. Even the and it's funny, you get down to, let me see, I'm trying to think about the cool spots here. Hogan cleans house. Yeah, then you, you kind of get down, you get down to that final four, which would be Hogan, the... Hogan, Flair, Sid, and Savage. Which, which turned out to be the WrestleMania. Yeah. The WrestleMania, WrestleMania main event. Uh, yeah. 
And then the famous ending here, you know, Savage gets tossed out by Sid, and then Sid dumps Hogan when he's trying to dump Flair. Let's talk about this ending. Yeah, this is a strange to this day. Hulk Hogan. What are you doing, Merle? He's a baby face, right? Wasn't that a very heel thing to do? Yes. And I know there was other stuff in the past, but this was really agreed. Me, as a nine-year-old, I was like, what are you doing? You just costed the match. He dumped and the reason why the Coliseum home video uh, is played is because the live crowd was not happy they at booed. all. No, I'm pretty sure this – I don't know. Maybe it was a little bit done, but I still heard them booing. But it was – more so it was probably worse on a live broadcast but i know there's a later version that they re-air this the ending on, on tv and they completely changed they changed the commentary and the crowd like to boo that hogan was thrown out well yeah well gorilla because even on saying, commentary here gorilla's like hey every man for himself fair. yeah what are you doing so he uh hogan holds on to his arm i don't know like what are you doing so Flair in a way up. Bobby Eaton got his wish because he said Hogan yeah. let Flair win. And he did. And he did. He now he held on his arm. He helped pull him out. And he knew what he was doing. And then he had yeah. the nerve to act surprised afterwards. And then and then, Flair. and then Hogan gets in the ring. They have Flair. to stare down. <laughs> They're breaking him up. The, the the crowd was booing. There's a guy, there's a guy in the front row with a sign that says Hulk Who, I think, on it. And Sid points at it. <laughs> they didn't edit this out. I was silent. So while this is going on, Flair's sneaking off to the back. The greatest, the greatest post match, match promo, maybe? promo ever. You think so? I think it is. It has to be. I mean, it's short and sweet too. It's not even like this is a long run out thing. Heenan's presenting the belt. I mean, Heenan. Uh, yeah, Heenan, perfect there. Tony gives him the belt, shakes his hand. We. I hate to heart. say. I hate to say that I told you so, but we I told, told you so. Put that cigarette out, me and Gene. Put the goat. that cigarette out with a tear well, in my eye. It's the greatest day of my life. Then he essentially, then he essentially just says, which is funny because he kept calling. I, and when you call yourself the, the man, you got to prove yourself to be the man. Right. And, and he basically and he says, this title is the only title in wrestling. That was a great yep. dig, obviously. I mean, the, he, uh, the only title in the wrestling world that means that you're number one. There's been plenty of great Rumble performances yeah. since. Sure. To me, this is the greatest of all time, bar none. I don't care if anyone yeah. broke his time record, elimination records. This was just like he I'll, got. I'll argue it's his greatest showing in his career. I know he's had he, a lot of hour long matches, a lot of classic matches, but this. He this got beat on forever in this match. And yeah. he was going after people. That was the other thing. Like this he was, was one like of the a... times where yeah. he was an aggressor as a heel, which didn't happen often. No, and it, and it, it was perfectly. And it, it's like, and it turned out, it's like, why is he doing that? It's, it's just his ego. He wants to show he can do this, and then he would beg off at the same time, but he didn't stop coming. So even though he wins <laughs> it kind of with a fluke, essentially, because Hogan's acting like a baby. Um, you still say, wow, he still earned that over an hour in the ring. Because even, even Gorilla is putting him over here. Like, I'm impressed. This guy's a great athlete. That's what he says. I think I comments right here. It's weird. Even even, even uh, Jack Tunney saying, great job. Like, it was just like played it so straight at the end there. But yeah, well, what a match. I can watch this a million times. And I have watched it a lot of times. Over and you the want years. to speak about performances? It's just. This was Bobby Heenan's. Coup de gras. This was the. This yeah. might have been Bobby Heenan's best work as a manager, an out, whatever. This. Yeah, this one match. One match. Or this one night, even you could say, but especially the, during the match here. Yeah. And you, he's so believable. Like, you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and, Gorilla's just having a great time antagonizing like, him. The and, time. and really, like, Bobby Heenan could have been. A stand-up comedian and made oh, sure. millions and millions of dollars. That's how funny he was. Oh yeah, who wouldn't have paid to go see him do an hour stand-up? Think about it, Mick Foley, Dolph Ziggler, these guys do these shows. Yeah, Bobby Heaton did them. 
such a shame, man, what happened to him. Because he should have he should have spent the last you know years of his life. I mean, he was doing conventions anyway. Can you imagine? But he would have been like he definitely would have been doing a podcast, a one man show, whatever you would think of. He'd be doing all these things for it. because. Yeah, it still gets me. I mean, the cruelest, the cruelest thing for a guy like that, his mouth, you know, his yeah. his voice taken away from him for a guy that talked, like you said here, he made the match me feel more important just from what he was saying. There were stakes here more than even the title, just from him. So <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, and then essentially we yeah. have uh love it. The road to WrestleMania, mm-hmm. WrestleMania seven, eight, right? Eight, eight, yeah, eight. Which uh, ends up being a really weird mania because you would think it would be Flair and Hogan. We don't get that. We do get Sid and Hogan. Yeah, I mean, at the ending of the show, the way they're face to face, I guess we shouldn't have been surprised at that point. That's what it wound up pivoting to, even though they do announce they do announce Hogan and Flair, but it's just a uh, setup for Sid to fully turn heel here for for no reason. For no reason, because <laughs> then, then he, he splits. Leaves. Then he just leaves because that's what Sid does. <laughs> he went to go play softball. Um, yeah, I mean that's pretty much all. Uh, I think we could say about this event. This yeah, it's pretty much just the, the one match show, right? But this is like the best Rumble match of all time. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Even though the show, overall you might not like the show, but just that match alone makes it worth watching. Yeah, Piper. I would just say if you want to skip the nonsense, just watch Piper's match. Watch the, the Rumble. That's all. You, yep. you pretty much get the story here. Yep. No Bret Hart. Nope. He was uh, fighting off that fever. I'm assuming. <laughs> Like well, um, he, he was supposed to fight Mountie on this pay per view for the defended yes. title, so he wasn't scheduled for the run. I don't know if he was scheduled for the rumble. He might have been scheduled for the rumble. I don't remember. I know it was all replacements because Janetti got basically got fired at this point, so he was replaced, I think, by Volkov because he wasn't even in the company at the time. Even they, and I think they, Haku also wasn't wasn't also on the roster at the moment he came back to fill in for somebody. So it might have been for Brett. I don't know. Or Crush. Hmm. Um, so we have a couple uh, we have some business to take care of before we uh, sign off uh, yeah. Wrestling World lost a um, one of the, the, the best independent so to speak but we'll say major company never, never an AEW never in WWE Jay Briscoe passed away in a pretty pretty horrific car accident, just I guess miles down the road from his house in, in Delaware. Driver coming the wrong way hit him, and uh, he died pretty much on impact. And his kids were hurt in the, the accident as well. Um, so our condolences go out to his family. Uh, Frank, would you like to add anything? Yeah, man, what can you say? Uh, tragic, tragic news. Just stunning, honestly. We, we see a lot of, like, early deaths in this business over the years. But when it's somebody that's currently, you know, a star, or, or, or you're being seen, it, it, it hits even harder, and so, especially the circumstances here, obviously. It's nothing he did. It's just, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. And then you hear his kids getting hurt. It's just... Uh, Coming off like and it's like and you, putting aside all the wrestling stuff because you start thinking, man, you know they were having probably the best year they've had in a long time. In a long time, not really appearing on a major program outside of like they were on Impact, they were on GCW, they were on Fake yeah. Ring of Honor, I'll call it yeah. Real Ring of Honor uh, before that. I mean, I, like I, the I, I had them as my match they of the year with FTR. I, mean, I had I picked them as my match of the year, did I not? Yeah, and honestly, I've seen them a lot lately. Because they've been in several indies I've been at. They've been in House of Glory Tag Champs for a while. I just saw them. That's really hit it a month ago on my birthday. I was there. They were in the main event fighting the team known as the main event in this this wild street fight, putting them over before they were probably heading yeah. to the, the new Orient. I mean, if we were talking about tag teams earlier, I mean, yeah. you have to put them in 
the conversation of and it's amazing for a team that never like if it, depending on what you consider major like if like you know impact was probably their highest profile tag team title win yep. if you don't count ring of honor and yep. for a team that was just essentially there from the beginning of, of ring of honor to the end we also gloss over i mean he was ring of honor yeah. uh heavyweight champion. champion a couple of times yeah so he was yeah, the team is great but he was probably not to, not to take away from his brother but he was probably the the breakout the star, you know, the standout of the team. But they were obviously – I give him a lot of credit for not, you know, just leaving his brother behind. He always stuck the, with him. The gimmick, the the characters. They're believable. I mean, they're they're believable. It's like legit. Just, that's what they are. They're two farm boys. That's what they are. Yeah. And, and, they, and they can have it, great it, matches, not just wild brawling. They actually – just, you know, actually wrestling – and they weren't classically trained. No. Like their dad taught them on a trampoline or something like that. Right. Yeah, and they were just thrown out there in the early Ring of Honor show when they were still teenagers. They appeared on one of the early TNA pay- weekly pay-per-views when they were still, what, were they 18 at the time? 19? Jeez. Yeah, so what a, what a, what a legacy they leave behind as a tag team. But as far as himself, you know, father, brother, Obviously, it seems friend. like everyone friend to pretty much everybody. It seems like, yeah, it seems like, you know, everyone that knew him was like, even if they weren't best friends, he acted like he was your best friend. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that uh, a couple, well, a couple tweets um, surfaced. It was a few years ago that that kind of like. Circle yeah, it, it, at first circle when it first happened, him. it was like kind of like I think he was when he was still Ring of Honor champion when it actually happened. Then it blew up again, and obviously it became a sticking point. Um, for they can't Khan. do a tribute well, show like, on, on. They can't even do a tribute show on TV. Like they barely. Me- I mean, they mentioned him a couple times. They wore some armbands and stuff, but they weren't even allowed to like. Uh, it's very strange. Which I know a lot of the internet has been up and up roared the last couple of days, and rightfully so. I mean, I'm not going to tell people what they should think, what they think if this, if this guy really changed or whatever. But people I know that knew him, yeah, it tell me like, this stuff. I believe it. Yeah. I believe. I believe he was a changed man. I believe he was a truly a good guy. And he, if you don't know, he could have said those comments under. You know, I'm not saying he didn't mean it, but a lot of things people said, you know, people. People have to. You know, times change. People change. Yeah. And if you can't, if you can't get second chance, what, what are you doing here? Yep. Um, I mean, I'm not going to speak for everybody. If you, if you still were not happy with him, hey. But I'm just speaking for myself. For, for Jay Miller, obviously, it's just it's unfortunate that that has to even be brought up, you know, in this tragic passing. But it's going. It has to be because for some people, it's part of it. It's part of his legacy. It's like when Kobe Bryant passed away. The Colorado incident, sure, would get mentioned. So I mean, it's one of those things where. But I mean, at least from what I see, you know, he made a concerted effort to be a better person. So yeah, so that's enough for me. That's my parallel. It's like yeah. you know, you saw the same thing with Kobe, where it was yeah. like maybe a misstep happened, but like look at all the t- other things that he did to help people. So, I mean, we all have our bad days, bad moments. Um, there's many pages and chapters to our lives. And I think for most people, the, the good outweighs the bad. And by all yeah. accounts, he was a good person, good father, good friend. So, so yeah, he will be missed, obviously. Um well, I don't know where we go from here, but uh, well, that's about it. My, my, my uh, best thoughts to his family and his children. Yeah, quickly, um, we'll uh, we'll, recover. we'll end here. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Yes, thanks, uh, so thanks guys for for all your feedback. We appreciate it. Um, so enjoy the show. Um, hopefully enjoy this year's Rumble. Um, yeah, hug your love, hug your roll. loved ones. Enjoy every day, and. Uh, We'll have, a Royal, we'll have a Royal Rumble show yeah. next week, pre-show, but way, way, way before the event. 
Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll see you guys then. Have a good week. Reach for the sky. Good night. Good luck. See you later. <laughs>